Are you walking with the Lord? Or are you moon walking with the devil? Pat with Pat's Two Cents, God's Church of Love online every Saturday at 12.15 p.m. We don't always really get what God is trying to help us grow into as the body of Christ. Sometimes the Lord just wants to clean house. Sometimes God wants to get in your business. He wants to get in my business. Yeah, because that's the kind of God we serve. But what I want to share with you is whatever God says, it's for our good. It's not for our detriment. It's for our good. Even some of those woodshed experiences, it's really for our good. All right, so I'm going to start out with Romans chapter 12. Mm-hmm. Starting at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Your reasonable service is basically saying that, well, that's the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hmm. hmm, hmm. Let me stop there real quick. The renewing of your mind. You know, repentance, when you, you, a lot of times, you know, when we repent, you know, we think we repented when we said, Lord, I'm sorry. Mommy and daddy, I'm sorry. But it's not the apology. It's the change. And the change begins in the mind, in the heart, in the soul. It doesn't. It doesn't change from the outward man. It starts from the inner man. And a lot of times we don't realize how much help we need getting just to that point. And what the Holy Spirit is doing is seasoning us, marinating us, mm, soaking us up with the ways, the character, the love of God. And that's when the changes begin. That's when we start relating to people differently. That's when our motives change. You understand what I'm saying? So there's a change, there's a metamorphosis that takes place where maybe once you were an argumentative fool, Maybe at one point in your life, you would uh, kick tail first and, and, and ask questions later. But when the Holy Spirit gets in you because you have Christ and you've got that new nature of God working in you, you find yourself being turned off to the way you used to do things. You find yourself being mindful of choices you make, words you say, the motives behind your actions. You start examining yourself. And that's a true sign that a change has taken place because it's a supernatural work of God. But you must want it. You must ask for it. See, Jesus doesn't break in like a thief. He'll come to snatch us up like a thief in the night, but he's not going to break into your heart like a thief. He will knock. He'll ring the doorbell. He'll stand outside and wait until you invite him in. He's a gentleman. Yeah, he's not just going to invite himself. He's waiting for you to invite him in. And then once you do that, the changes really do begin. You find yourself being very mindful. Things that you used to do and you, and you do it again. Ooh, ooh. It, where before you would revel in it. Hey, whatever. 
And now it's like, oh, I can't, I, I don't feel good doing that anymore. There's a change. It's really a metamorphosis that takes place in our character, in our hearts, in our minds, even in our language and behavior, big time. So what ends up happening is because you have invited Jesus in, you have asked God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. And now you're getting into the word and you're comparing yourself to what you read in that word. The renewing of your mind takes place right there. Wow, that's something. And then God starts to ignite things in your spirit that you have nothing to do with. You know it's a supernatural work. You know God is steadily proving himself to people he doesn't have to waste his time with, but because of his love. Hmm, yes. All right. So now let's keep reading. Verse three. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Now, we're not going to go into all that. But the point is, we are members one of another. And one thing I see in a lot of churches is partiality. God is not partial. You notice that. All men are created equal in God's eyes. Which means, if you're talking to someone who's retarded, you can't think of yourself as superior to that retarded person. Because when God gets through giving out some of these gifts, that retarded person who can't spell their own name might be able to sit down and play a cantata. And you don't even know the difference between a C and a D on the piano keys because you haven't taken piano lessons. Or maybe you did take piano lessons and you failed horribly. But you're very intelligent. And now you're dealing with a person in the church who's retarded. But they can sit down at a piano and play whatever you put before them. They just, the gift is there. So what God is doing with the gifts and all of that, he's leveling out the playing field. He's letting you know you are no more important. You are no more valuable because you run a corporation than that pianist who happens to be third grade level of retardation, and they're maybe 40 years old. But in their mind, they're, they're three years in the, in the third grade. But they can play that piano like a master. Why? Because God gives the gifts. We don't. We can go out and take lessons. But the supernatural gifts, they come from God. And when God gives a gift, I'm telling you, it comes easy to that person. They may not be able to tell you how it came about, but it comes easy. It's like Lynn in her, in her YouTube channel, Holy Spirit News with a candle on it. When she, she's not a, a, um, a prolific writer, let's say, but when God's anointing hits her and she feels the inspiration she writes and boom, it's done. Something that would normally take Lynn hours and days and time over and written and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. But when God tells her to write something, brrr, it's done. And it's not even in the language she would use herself. So when God is gifting you with something, it lets you know he has taken you above yourself. He has moved you beyond your capabilities. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what the anointing does. And that stops us from getting the big head, doesn't it? Yes, it does. He will use some of your life's training to help hone and polish your gift. But the gift itself, that comes straight from God. So, what God is trying to get people to understand, and this is what I used to see in the body of Christ. My niece and I used to talk about it. 
you would have not. Now, this is in the church now. In the church. We're not even talking about the world. We're talking church. Mm -hmm. You have the A group and the B group. You might even have a C group. Mm -hmm. And the A group is the inner sanctum with the pastor. They're the pastor's family, the pastor's entourage, the pastor's closest friends, all that hang with them, all that work with them in ministry. And then you have some of those that work with them in ministry, but they're in the B crowd. They don't get invited to everything. Why? They're too wild. They're, they're too raw. They're too rough around the edges. They won't make me look good. So let's keep them on the sidelines until we need the gift. And that's the way a lot of you treat people. And you don't realize you're thinking more highly of yourself. You don't realize that. Subtle, isn't it? That's an area of pride. Arrogance. Mm. Okay, now, but God may see that person who's rough around the edges, who, who's not good at keeping their hair looking good, who's not well-groomed who's not highly disciplined in a lot of the basic areas in life, who might be loud or rough or, 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 or they might be almost obnoxious in ways, or they're just a little too weird for your taste. But God sees a golden heart, a pure heart, a loving soul, a forgiving, kind, merciful spirit. And he's looking at you with all of your polished entourage with you. And he sees a sepulcher. He sees dead men's bones. Mm -hmm. Even though you put on a great show and the raw person does not, they're almost an embarrassment to you. But what you don't realize is God smiling on them and he may be looking at you with embarrassment. Oh my goodness. Don't let these people run into this one. <laughs> you know, you, you never know. I'm just saying in human terms, you know, we know what God, you know, God's not thinking like we do. He's in control. But the bottom line is you may think more highly of yourself because of your position, because of your level of intellect, because of your giftings, because of, of your polished poise, your presentation, your carriage, all of that. Yes, you have it going on. But God may be holding his nose when he, when he looks at you. Now, his gifts and callings are without repentance. So that doesn't mean he won't use you. But trust me, the anointing, is with the one that's rough around the edges. God can use them and see eternal weights of glory operating in their lives because their spirit is right. Their spirit is clean. Ha! Huh. What's happening in your spirit? What's really deep down in there? I remember uh, hearing some grown adults my age being offended about this, that, and the other. And you know what it sounded like to me? It almost sounded like a bunch of little kids quibbling over a toy in second or third grade. And I said, but wait a minute. These are grown saints who have walked with you for decades. Why are they still quibbling over the beggarly elements of life? What has happened to stunt their growth? Because see, God wants us to grow. Now, let me share this scripture real quick as we think on that, Selah. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 says this, but speaking the truth in love. You know, a lot of us can't handle the truth, though. You know, just can't handle it. But, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things. This is verse 15, which is the head, even Christ. So you see what it said? But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Some of us need to grow up into him in all things, not some things, not the things of our choosing. In all things, 
which is the head, even Christ. You know, there are times, I'm going to share this with you, body of Christ. And some of you who are not in the body, but you're, you're growing anyway, thank God. Thank God you're growing. That's the point. But listen, some of the things that make us grow the most, if we have an ear to hear, a mind to understand, and a heart to respond, Words of correction, Whew. sometimes they come in a very harsh tone. Sometimes they come with a very wrong spirit. Words of correction, that's one of the hardest things for most of us adults. Most of us grown folk have a hard time dealing with. Why? Pride. But listen, if you can stick your pride in your back pocket and sit on it for a minute and allow those words of correction, not the meanness, not the embarrassing part, not the disrespect, but just the truth that's in those words. If we can get the truth out of it, we can grow, 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 grow. The harshest words can sometimes be the very thing to make you grow the most. It depends on what you do with those words. It depends on your response. Now you can sit there with your thumb in your mouth, scratching your booty with the other hand, fussing, eyebrows touching, as you wow, wow, wow about how dare they talk to me like that. How come they treat me like that? That's not fair. That's not nice. But guess what? God may be working something out of you. Mm. Now, he may not be happy with the way they handled it. And trust me, he will deal with them all down the road. They don't get away with it. But you, what are you doing with the truth? Hmm? What are you doing with that? Are you having a pity party folding your arms with your bottom lip poked out a mile long? Well, I just won't play. Well, I won't talk to you anymore. Well, I won't go to your house anymore. I'm never going to come and eat at your dinner. You'll never see me on Thanksgiving anymore. That's pouting. That's what two and uh, second and third grade kids do. Here's the sad part. I see people my age and older doing that. They quit. They fold their arms. They walk away. They quit. Hmm. That'll fix you. Now what you going to do without me? The body of Christ is doing that, y'all. What's up with that? How old are you really? If you were to go to God and say, Lord, how old would you say I am? How old do you think he'd say you were? Two? Terrible twos? Five? Ten? Would he say you are of age or you are beyond your years? What would he say about you based on your behavior, your reactions, your attitude? What would he say? Do you want to hear it? Really? All right. <clears throat> now we're going to uh, go to Ephesians chapter 3, and we are going to close with that. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3, starting at verse 14. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Ain't it time out for you to stop being so full of yourself? Get over yourself. Okay, back to the word. <laughs> 20, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, 
abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So when you look at that line that says, verse 19, and to know the love of Christ. Do you know a lot of born again Christians are still coming to that knowledge? They haven't quite masticated that one. They haven't quite, they haven't chewed the cud long enough to get all the juices out of it. Think about that. Why? Because they're feeding off of the world's junk food. There's so much compromise in the body of Christ. That's what we started with Romans 12. There's so much compromise in the body of Christ that we have blurred the lines of demarcation until it's a gradual, a gradual descent. We think we're climbing, we're moving up. Oh, we're moving on up, moving on up to the east side. Yeah, we think we're moving on up. And God is saying, baby, look, you're down at the lower levels now. What happened? You've lost so much ground. You think you're walking forward, but you're moonwalking through life and you're sliding backwards. And as you slide backwards, you're moving lower and lower and lower down the hill. Why? Compromise. That's why. You listen to the world so much, you start believing its lies. You start coming into agreement with its lies. You start de uh, orchestrating your own life accordingly, rather than staying steeped in the God's words and sticking with his percepts, with the things he values, with the things that are important to him. No, you start listening to the excuses of the world. Hmm, think about that. As they rationalize their sin. And then for you, you start accepting the, you're okay, he's okay, she's okay, we're okay, and that's okay. You start accepting the philosophy of Satan's lies and you start functioning from it. And then when you run into a born again Christian who is on the straight and narrow, not judgmental, not intolerant, but they stick to their values. Thank you, but no thank you. I will not compromise, but I'll pray for you. And you get offended. Why do you get offended? They're too religious. They're too radical. They're too over the top with this God thing. When did it become a God thing? Are you still in Christ? Or have you backslidden and you don't even know it? You better go to that God that you're talking about and ask him. Say la, think on that one. In the meantime, body of Christ and those who are not, you may want to rededicate your life to the Lord. Reassess where you are in the spirit realm. Have you gained ground? Have you lost ground? Where do you stand right now? Are you standing or are you wallowing? Are you walking with the Lord or are you moon walking with the devil? Amen. All right. Ask yourself and ask God that question. Don't just answer it yourself. Because, you know, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? We don't know what we'll come up with. Ask the Lord. That's where the real truth is. God bless you.